what you're about to experience are my opinions and truths. I'm suggesting their possibilities for you to consider, in which you can then come up with your own logical conclusions. Good day or evening to everyone out there in the decoding world. My name is Logan and this is Decode Your Reality. And today we're going to be breaking down and decoding, of course, the holiday otherwise known as Easter. And I have so much into this presentation, a jam-packed presentation for you folks. And I didn't know what to name this. And this is what kind of came into my mind when I finally decided to name it. So this one is the Looney Easter Santa Bunny God Decoded. And obviously you have Santa there to the right hand side of the screen and to, to the opposite end uh, you have Alice. And that's why you have the rabbit here chasing the clock. And of course, if we couldn't leave out Jesus and the resurrection, we're gonna get into that. But what does Christmas have to do with the Passover and resurrection, well, they're the complete opposite ends of the spectrum, but they still are connected and tightly woven. And, you know, the, the very big takeaways is, you know, Alice in Wonderland is tied directly to the story in the Bible. It's all connected. And Alice goes down into Wonderland. And, you know, when you look at Santa, what is he doing? He's going down into your living room through the chimney they both go down and alice of course chases the rabbit and see you know, wait do you see this, this all this santa and the resurrection folks it's all connected and it's this is this one was a lot of fun but folks clearly i can show you with clear and ironclad convincing evidence that this entire reality is scripted it's completely fixed and that's why we're able to synchronize all of these pieces of information that I'm about to show you. So let's get into the presentation. And again, I'm always going to uh, suggest throwing on a pair of headphones, getting comfortable, getting immersed in this presentation. This one is going to be rather lengthy. I don't know how long it's going to be, but nonetheless, uh, let's, let's get started with this one, folks. Let's get started with this one. So folks, here are the topics during this presentation. In the zero position, we have, of course, the intro. I always want to include the zero, and I have a couple slides I'm going to be bringing in before we get into the first topic, which is going to be Bugs Bunny. What <laughs> Bugs Bunny is going to be involved in this, folks. Wait till you see the sinks in this. It's absolutely insane. Number two, we got to talk about the resurrection because that's what the Passover and Easter is all about. They're they're all connected. The Passover, the resurrection, the, the whole thing is connected. There is no separation. In the number three position, we have Alice in Easterland. Oh, that's right. Not Wonderland, but it's Easterland. Number four, we're going to get into Zinc's 30. You know the element Zinc? It's an essential element for the body. It's Zinc's 30 because it is the 30th element. Wait till you see the connections for that. Number five, the story of the tortoise and the hare. Of course, that's, you know, why Bugs Bunny is in this. That's why the rabbit represents Easter. And then, of course, what did you see in the sixth position? So here we go, folks. Here is part of the intro. And I showed this as a sneak peek, probably like a preview on my social media. And got a lot of comments. Thanks to each and every one of you that did comment. But, you know, folks, when I start, this is what got me involved in decoding this topic Easter and I, I hadn't again I had no plan on doing it it just randomly came to me but of course as fate would have it in my destiny here I am and many of you picked up and have really tuned in on the Looney Tunes logo 
and what it means. And obviously it's going down the hole. I mean, that's what, that's what it signifies. And then, you know, you have the rabbit's face there. This is right from Warner Brothers and their logo, but it's a direct match to the element yttrium and the icon that the Royal Society of Chemistry decided to use. And when you go to that, to the periodic table, the Royal Society, the RSC.org, and you go to this element yttrium, here it is. And they, of course, you go down to the uses and properties, and they're going to tell you that, you know, yttrium is used in radar technology, and that gets into radium and you know, radiology and x-rays, and then we get into xenon and all that. But it's, you know, the very reason why they chose this was because the background echoes with the Warner Brothers logo. And that's all folks. And, you know, you can take that's all folks and you can bring that into the ciphers, the numerology ciphers. You're going to get the 137, which is tied to the speed of light and the 33 and the 44 is gold currency. And, you know, you can go a lot of ways with that. <clears throat> but this yttrium element, of course, is tied to the snake's tongue and the 88 miles an hour and time travel is tied to Lucifer and the King Diamonds card. There's a lot of synchronicities to it. But folks, when you observe the 39 and the 88, you realize that this is a significant piece of whatever created this reality. It seems to me anyway, at this level and stage of the game and where I'm at with my research, that it likes to come down here and become man and woman. That's where the story of the fallen angels comes into play. But the basic fundamentals of it is that whatever created this reality, it likes to come down here and experience what it feels like to be a man or a woman. And there are a lot of people that believe that, you know, we are all the extensions of what people call the G.O.D., the divine. And we are constantly expressing through life from the G.O.D., I personally, as I've mentioned so many times, we are definitely an extension of that, but we are being used remotely. And the G.O.D. likes to come down here and be man and woman, but it, it's controlling us remotely. And this is what this whole radar thing is and giving off a signal and what I feel to be the truth and how this works. But obviously the sinks keep going when we bring in the deck of the medicine cards. And as you've been following this great work, there are 52 cards in the medicine deck and there's insects, animals, and reptiles, etc., etc., in that deck of 52 cards. And the 30th card is a rather interesting one because it's the rabbit card. And we're talking about Easter folks and the rabbit signifying the springtime and the resurrection and that's tied to the passover and death and regeneration and all that which is where you get the you know the rabbit of time in alice in wonderland this great graphic rendition of alice and then the rabbit with the clock and time and and showing us that we only have a short period of time and here is that element right here folks it's called zinc and I have a topic on this, and I'm going to break it down. I'm going to show you the most fascinating links to this and to show you man could never code this, not at the levels that I'm showing you, because there would be no point to sit there and consciously code all this stuff. There has to be a point behind it. And there just doesn't seem to be any point other than this is what the code is. And this is what the code's expressing itself. But nonetheless, that 30th element zinc is a representation of the 30th rabbit card going down the hole, which is what Alice did following that rabbit of time. And I put a necklace on here because you see Xenon is tied to the X chromosomes. It's also, if you watched my movie, uh, my presentation of They Live Decoded, it was studio or station 54 that was putting out the hypnotic trance to keep you, you know, pacified so to speak and uh, to keep you kind of uh in that trance like state not knowing what's going on it is that part of the game folks where it, part of the game is to wake up and to realize that you're in a game and you're being used i know a lot of you don't resonate with that that's totally fine again make the truth your own but this is the 
big piece of the uh, presentation right here is Alice following the rabbit down into time and Bugs Bunny, and we're going to get onto that, and zinc, of course, being an essential element. 65.38 is zinc's most abundant weight. We could break that down. A lot of you like to reduce down. That'd be the 1111. And 65, of course, is the makeup of the 33 and 32, which is ascension and duality. 33 plus 32 is 65. And there's a lot of information on that. We're going to be getting into duality. But, you know, clearly, again, let me show you. Here's Xenon around the, the necklace here. This is what I believe to be the XYZ. This is X, this is Y, and this is Z, the XYZ. 24, 25, and 26. And the 54, which is tied to Xenon, is tied to the statement, God is within you. How about that, folks? God is within you is a 54, and 54 in the string of pi. It appears at the 191st decimal digit of pi, and that's linked to this element called Osmium, as in the Wizard of Oz. You could syncretize all this and go way deeper. But there it is, folks. It's the XYZ, and it's the Xenon, and there's someone in my head, but it's not me. That was Pink Floyd. If you watch my Dark Side of the Moon, this is what's running us, folks. And it all trickles down, and we go down the rabbit hole, and we get used to play out our parts through the code. And so then we get into this first topic, folks, called Bugs Bunny. Bugs Bunny has everything to do with this presentation because, of course, Easter's all about the rabbit. So, of course, I went and I did a lot of research on Bugs Bunny. I've never done that before, but, of course, he's the bunny. So, I could have gone and shown you 10 more different slides on top of what I'm showing you right now, but this, would this is going to suffice everything. And Bugs Bunny noticed the first appearance of Bugs Bunny was on April 30th, 1938. April 30th of all days. And that is tied to the thir April 30th, 30th card. I mean, folks, these came out in 1988, these cards. This came out in 1938, 50 years prior. So did the people, the people that created the medicine deck did they sit down and research Bugs Bunny and the first appearance of that cartoon character? And then they said, well, we got to put the rabbit on there because Bugs Bunny came out on April 30th. Folks, that's absolutely ludicrous thinking. Could, is it possible? Yeah, it's possible. I want you to use your common sense and logic, though. What would be the point of that? And on top, I mean, well, obviously the point would be to match it up with the rabbit, but are they going that deep? into the reality and saying, well, you know, we're, I'm, a, I'm a cartoon fan, so the 30th card's going to be the rabbit. Or were they just being used and they chose the rabbit based off that number 30 and maybe they knew about Easter and we're going to get into that, right? So there are some conscious things going on. I totally believe that because when you get into the code and you see the code, you can start to make conscious decisions based upon the code and your expressions of it. But there it is, the 30 and the 30. And then that's tied to zinc. Now, zinc has many atomic weights. One of them is 64. And what is 64? Well, it's just the possible codons in our DNA that make up our DNA, the tree of life. I have a decode coming out on Jacob's Ladder. But there it is, it's 64 tied to the G-O-D element. So let's keep going. When you go even further into the string of pi with that number 30, this is how tightly woven this code is, folks. Pi is where it's at, tied to the elements. Look at the, look at the strong, not weak or watered down. This is a spot on, dead on, hit the nail right on the head discovery here. In the string of pi, the 30, it appears at the 64th and 65th decimal digit of pi. It, 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 there it is. It's zinc right there in the string of pi, folks. You can't miss this. So this would be another layer that man, I mean, again, did the people that made the cards of uh, the medicine deck, did they, did, were they using pi? Were they using the elements of the periodic table to, cr to create these animals and insects and reptiles and whatever they used as the expressions of these cards? Because there it is, folks. It's, it's right there staring you in the face. 
30 in the string of pi occupies both 64 and space 65, and that is two of Zinc's weights. It's right there, folks. And Bugs Bunny's tied right to it, Zinc. April 30th, the day that this Bugs Bunny character first appeared, is the 120th day of the year. That's tied to this element right here called antimony. And folks, what's antimony? It's the freaking all-seeing eye, folks. Here it is. It's right there. Antimony, they used to put it under their eyes as mascara in the Egyptian times. It means not alone. Right there, it's the all-seeing eye. If you split your brain in half, you're going to see that right there. And I believe this is the, these are our two eyes, the DNA, macro to micro. But I mean, what, do you, what are the odds, folks, that you could synchronize these like this? And are the people that are creating Warner Brothers, creating these characters, do they know this stuff? Or is just man being used? I, I got to leave that up to you, obviously. I'm not here to force anything on you. I think man's being used. Consciously, you can do some stuff. But at this level, folks, in 1938, are they synchronizing the elements on the periodic table and, and knowing all these kinds of things? I mean, it's, it's possible. Let's keep going. Let's keep going. Here's the full date. Here's the life path of this in numerology. It's adding up the entire date, April 30th, 1938. There it is. It's a 28 slash one, but it's a 28. And look at where 28 appears in the string of pi. The 33rd, that's 30, 30, 33 and 34. We're going to get into that, but it starts at the 33rd decimal digit. What's 33, folks? It's ascension. It means our DNA. It's tied right to our DNA, folks, right there. And this total date of the first appearance of Bugs Bunny is tied to the 33 and the 28, which of course is Lucifer and it's man and all that stuff. It's all tied together. And it's also connected to Bugs Bunny. Bugs Bunny is a 33. So how about that, folks? Do you see how deep this goes? And how many things you'd have to actually sit down and consciously code to get this all in order? April 30th, 1938, there's the full date. It equals the number 28. In the string of pi, it is found at the 33rd decimal digit, and freaking Bugs Bunny in numerology is 33. What are the odds, folks? What do you think the odds would be that all these things are syncing up like this? Do you think that man could consciously sit there and code this? And what would be the point? What would be the point? Or is this, whatever created this reality, is it's, this is the code, is it the, 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 the kind of the HTML code, if you will? It's the code of our reality, folks. And it's just expressing itself and it's showing you itself. So here's the um, wild hair and Elmer Fudd and Bugs Bunny. This is the, was called a wild hair. If you read a little caption up there, a wild hair, 1940. Um, and they say this is um, what Bugs Bunny's first official appearance is. I know it contradicts what this is right here because this one's saying Porky's hair hunt in 1938, but this one right here is saying it's 1940, and that one's on July 27th, 1940, and that's the 40, 14th card in the deck. There it is, the July 27th card, the release date of this episode of what this is saying, the first official appearance of the wild hair and Bugs Bunny is the July 27th card. And let me be really transparent and show you guys. Here's the boilerplate chart of the cards. Here's the month of July and going down to the 27th. And there it is. It's the Ace Clubs card. And the Ace Clubs card is the 14th card in the deck. And what does 14 mean? Well, 14 is time. It's God. If we go and look over here, 14, keep your eyes on that Chaldean. It's time. And what did Alice chase down into Wonderland? A rabbit into time. There it is. It's time. And we know that the G-O-D is the same outcome as is this character right there. Satan. That's why this, the, the whole story of Satan, it says that he only, he only has a short period of time. Yeah, because it's time. it means time. That's what it means. 27's currency, but how about that, folks? 
this expression of a wild hair of Bugs Bunny. Here's the guy who was the voice of Bugs Bunny, Melvin Jerome Blank. What, and, and this is this is where this is where it gets kind of funny for me anyway because again you know this guy not only was he the voice of Bugs Bunny but he was the man of a thousand of voices I think is what his nickname was he was a voice of many characters but look at what his birthday is folks May 30th of all days on the calendar it it's the freaking 30 May 30th and this guy was the voice of Bugs Bunny. And again, this is funny to me. And to me, this proves with ironclad convincing evidence that man's being used. Because, you know, the, I can see if the guy was just the voice of Bugs Bunny, he would use so many other voices. He was a massive name in the voiceover um, scene in Hollywood. If you go study, go study him. And he was born on the 30th, and the 30th card is the rabbit card, and he was the voice of Bugs Bunny. I mean, what are the odds, folks? Think about this. You know, Warner Bros. is saying, oh, we got to find a guy who is born on the 30th, and he can voice out Bugs Bunny because it's, it's the 30th rabbit card that's going to be created in 1988. Yeah, that's, that's what we're looking at here, folks. Man's not coding this, folks. Man is just being used to express the code. This is a perfect example right here. So May 30th is 530, or if you just take the zero off, it's 53, and that's the one half of the I am. There it is, is this the 53? It's the one half of the I am, and I'm gonna show that the I am that I am. Folks, this is this the this is the divine coming down and becoming man into Mel Blanc, and he becomes the voice of Bugs Bunny. And the reason why the code so, so, so tightly woven is because it's supposed to be. That's why. That's why you're seeing these sinks like that. So let's get into the resurrection because obviously this has so much to do with Easter. And what this whole presentation is primarily around is the resurrection. And Easter really is linked to the Passover and its position on the calendar. And I thought this was really interesting because, again, it's all going to synchronize together. It's all going to connect together. There is no separation. But notice that the Hebrew word for the Passover is the number 40 in numerology. And the 40, of course, is tied to zirconium. And when you look at zirconium and remember we're talking about the passover right so when you look at zirconium it's got the dung beetle there and when you go down to the uses and properties you're going to see that the scara or the scara beetle it was a symbol of regeneration and creation what, what what is this all about this whole story death and regeneration that's what it's all about and you got to be kidding me this this is this is a 40 link to zirconium this means gold colored and this is tied to the Gnostic Demiurge called Yaldabaoth. There's the 89. 89 is the weight of zirconium. It's most abundant. 40. And this is the original spelling of the Jewish Passover, which is linked to Easter. It's where Easter came from. It's, it's owned and operated by the Gnostic Demiurge, which, of course, is an extension down to the yod heh vah and to the Bible, and you get the Jesus and Lucifer characters. It's all tied together, folks. But it's the Demiurge that's running all this, which I feel keeps you stuck in the box. It's going to recycle you back in the box. That's even if we have a choice. When you look at the number 40 in the string of pi, folks, look at where it appears at the 70th and 71st. It occupies two spaces, 70 and 71. Get out your calculators. What's 70 plus 71? It's 141 and what's the 141 tied to it's this element right here called cerium and this one's really important because we know cerium is tied to the god of agriculture but that 58 folks what's the number 58 if you've been following along it's this word right here called the puppet master there it is the 58 the puppet master folks the one that owns pi, what that we're all creating through our emotional expressions. Can measure that in trigonometry and the sine and cosine waves. But folks, it's tied right to the Passover. That whole story. Tied to the Torah, tied to the Old Testament. Folks, if you're if you're a fan of the Bible and all that kind of stuff, you know, you gotta know what's going on and how it all works. 
not just by using your faith and what somebody told you on a Sunday morning. It goes way deeper than that, folks, way deeper. So let's break down Easter and more of the resurrection. Because remember, the resurrection is about Jesus coming back to life, coming back to becoming a man again, a physical being, that story. And, you know, Easter is a number 20. And 20 is tied to this element right here called calcium. What are, what are our bones made out of? Calcium. Calcium. And, you know, notice the weight of that. The, the average is 40. Remember that the Passover is 40, tied to Yaldabaoth. So who do you think owns and operates Easter and duality and the Passover and the Torah and the Old Testament and the New Testament? Who do you think operates that, folks? It's all connected. There, there's no separation. None. And when you get down to and follow along, you know, calcium has 20 protons. Well, neon has an atomic weight of 20. Neon has 10 protons. It's just like 10, 20, and then zinc is 30. And we're going to get into that. But this is man. Man is 10, directly tied to neon. So you can see, you know, Easter is duality, and we're going to get into that. And man becomes part of duality as the number 10. What's the 10th letter in the Hebrew alphabet? The Yod. The yod heh is the 10th letter that starts off with that in its name, its expression, in the Torah. All of it's connected, folks. Passover. And then you get into Christian. Easter's all about Christianity, by the way. You, you should know that. But, you know, there's. I don't know why people will label anything anymore because if you are putting your faith in the Bible, then that, may, that would make you Jewish because the, the Jewish faith is the one that started the Bible in the Old Testament, according to history, unless that history is wrong. But nonetheless, here we go, folks. It's all about neon and us being currency and being man. You know, here's right off the Royal Society of Chemistry, neon. And look at the symbol they used. A freaking dollar sign. A dollar sign, folks, meaning money. We are currency. Here it is. Neon is man. Neon goes to calcium. We turn in it, we go into duality. And then we fall through the hole. We fall through the hole into duality and we become man. That's how this works right here. You can clearly see logic and common sense. What these these are all these elements are bridges. They they are part of their puzzle pieces of the puzzle. Remember, a rabbit, we go down the rabbit hole into duality and we become man and we, we are currency. We're little currency devils. I mean, you know, if you watch my decode on Groundhog Day decoded, that's what we are. Groundhog is currency devil. So there it is, folks. Easter is 20, leading to duality in our calcium and becoming physical matter. And duality is that direct match to Easter. And that's what it's all about, is that story of the Christ, him resurrecting himself into duality. Make no mistake about it, folks. That's what this whole story means. And there is no separation. Here's even, this is where, this is even more ironclad and convincing evidence, folks. The human skeleton is composed, when you're born, there's about 270 bones. Now, obviously, there's going to be some exceptions. There are going to be people with more or less. I'm going on the average. 270 bones, folks. Here in duality. When you bring that into the string of pi, look at what the number is that occupies that 270th digit. The 270th space in the string of pi is the zero. It's the freaking zero. Now, why I'm showing you that is because when you look at the word resurrect, it's a 32. And of course, what happens to water at 32 degrees Fahrenheit? It turns to a solid ice cubes. Think about this logically and with your common sense. 33 degrees is always typically wrapped around ascension. And 32, it denotes duality. 32 degrees, 33 degrees, liquid or solid. We become physicalness 
in the 32. So the Christ was resurrected into duality. And look at where the 32 appears. It occupies the zero as well. So let me backtrack. So we have the 270 bones average at birth, and that is occupying the zero position in pi. And then you have resurrect, which is 32, which also is found at that zero position. How You think this is by accident, folks? You think man's coding this? Man's not coding anything, folks. Man is being used to express the code. This is There are too many moving parts with this. This is the code expressing itself. Like, you know, the operating system that you're using to watch this presentation on your phone or your laptop or your computer, someone wrote the software to that so you can watch this presentation. That's the code expressing itself. There is an architect that wrote the code of this reality. And it's all connected. There is no separation. That's why there's no right or wrong. There are no mistakes. There are just things that happen in our lives. And this is telling you the story of how it works. And it's in the story. Did you, was there a real guy named Jesus who was resurrected? I don't know. I wasn't there. And neither were any of you. So you can't prove it. There's no way to prove that but it's still written into the story in this game of life. It's written into the code of this game of life, folks. That I know for a fact, because I'm showing it right here and right now. So resurrect is 32. The element that bridges that is this one right here called sulfur. And of course that S when you turn it on its side is gonna make up the sine and cosine waves. Here in duality, the S, that's why the serpent starts with the S and the snake and the dragon and the dollar sign, it's all linked to 32 degrees, which means duality. Right here, black and white is 32, folks. It's a direct match to the word resurrect. Resurrection into duality. But you see, duality is hell. We're in hell, folks. Yes, it has a lot of great moving parts, I enjoy it very much, just like you do. There are many good times, but I don't like the suffering and the pain and the anguish and having to get old and go through all the other things that become, you know, not so likable. And that's what this sulfur means. There is the 32, there's the 16, there's the 16, there's the 30. You can't miss this, folks. You, you can't miss this code when you see it. And man could never code this. No way. Not possible. Too many moving parts with these words. I'm just using one cipher, by the way. You could bring in other ones and show you more extensiveness of this code to make it even more, that much more complicated. So then we get into, you know, the resurrection and how it's all linked to Alice following the rabbit of time down here. Because it's, the, it's the, the architect coming down here into time, into the time of sea and space, the sea of space. And all you have to do is synchronize all of the layers to get the story and how this code is written. Folks, it's right here. It starts with zinc. Show this in the beginning slides. It's the 30 which is tied to the rabbit card. So we all go down the rabbit hole, chasing the rabbit of time. You only get so much time. That's why death is the very one thing that we all cannot escape. And we go down into duality. There it is. Cal, we become our physicalness. 20, calcium, bones. Death and regeneration is tied to Yaldabaoth and the 40, tied to the Passover. It's all connected. So we go down into duality and we become man. And we play out this game called life. That's why that's where chess came from. That's why there are 64 squares on a chessboard, 64 possible codons in our DNA. You think that's on accident? And do you think man's doing that to mock you? Man is not doing anything to mock anybody, folks. This is the code expressing itself. Everything happens very specifically. Sharks eat fish, they're coded that way. Lions eat gazelles, they're coded that way. You have white blood cells in your body, they're coded specific ways to go after bacteria and viruses in your body. It's called your immune system. You don't have to tell them that, do anything. That's the way it's coded here in this duality. All of it is coded. Man's not coding it, man is just following the code. 
based off of how the code is expressing itself. So let's get into Alice in Easterland. Not Alice in Wonderland, Alice in Easterland, which has everything to do with the Bible. I've showed this many times. Folks, look, look at the sinks on this. I'm not one to really go crazy with the ciphers. Some of you like using it, you know, going and using a lot of the other ciphers, and that's totally fine. But, you know, you, it's very rare that you find words that can match up like this. Now, I showed Yaldabaoth being tied to the Holy See. If you watch my decode on Yaldabaoth, that's what's running the Vatican. And the Jesuits and all, it's Yaldabaoth, period. Showed that with ironclad convincing evidence. So how is it that Lewis Carroll writing Alice in Wonderland and look at look at the tie-ins why why did Lewis Carroll name it Alice was he sitting down with all some of these weren't even around when he created Alice in Wonderland but yet here we are in the future synchronizing them look at this one two three four five six seven eight there's nine different ones that are a direct bullseye match Bible and Alice and they both talk about fallen angels and going down into a hole following a rabbit it's the rabbit is zinc we go down the rabbit hole folks and here is that story by lewis carroll written in 1865 folks lewis carroll was not using these numerology ciphers when he made his story of alice in wonderland lewis carroll was being used to create the story his mind was not his own this is this is absolute proof and support in my opinion but look at this folks 1865 there it is it's the prime number for this number right there 16033 is the 1865th prime number this novel by lewis Carroll was written in 1865 and so how do we synchronize this look at this 16033 here it is folks it's right on this element called sulfur, which I showed already. Sulfur has a few weights, a few isotopes, but it has 16 protons. And there's the 33. Focus. It's right inside that square. You can't miss it. Right there. It's right there. And what is this story denoting? Alice falling down into Wonderland. What's, what's the 16, folks? What does that mean? It means hell. It means going down into hell, folks. That's what we're in. That's why there's all this suffering going on. That's why you're seeing all this nasty things going on in our world. Because this is where we're at. Like it or not. So you can clearly see, folks, man's not coding this. Lewis Carroll wasn't sitting down looking at prime numbers because he was living in 1865 and he knew that it was the prime number for 16033 and it was synchronized with the element sulfur and sulfur being 16 is a direct match to hell. He, he, didn't, he wasn't sitting down consciously like this, folks. I'm sorry, but that's just not the way logic and common sense works here. This is a code that was written before each and every one of us got here and we're just playing out our code. That's it. I'm not here to take you away your beliefs and you thinking you have free will. If you want to believe that, that's totally fine. I can't prove that you don't. You can't prove that you do. So we're at a stalemate. Not here to show that. I don't really care. I'm showing you what the code is expressing as. That is what I can prove. And we all use letters and words. We all express magic. We're all magicians, all of us. So let's go a little bit further here. Alice in Wonderland, of course, tied to Easter. The rabbit, re death and regeneration, resurrection. I mean, sulfur is a 28, folks. There it is, sulfur. Tied to the prime number of this number, and it's tied to sulfur. Sulfur is a 28, and 28 is a very special number because when you bring in this into the string of pi, folks, look, look at the tie-ins to this. So, so again, look at how detailed and how deep this code goes. Sulfur is a 28 through numerology. When you say sulfur, it's 28. When you bring that into the string of pi, it occupies two digits, space 33 and space 34. What's 33 plus 34? 
Get out your calculators. It's freaking 67. And what's the 67th element? It's called holmium. What does Santa say during Christmas time, folks? Ho, ho, ho. And he goes down the chimney. Maybe not in that order, but he goes down the freaking chimney, folks. What does Alice do? She goes down the freaking hole into Wonderland. What do we do? We go down into duality, folks, and we become man, and we live in hell. That's what that's what all this code is showing you, showing you how it works, and man is being used. And that's where Kundalini gets in. Kundalini's 28. 28 appears at the 33rd decimal digit. How many uh, vertebrae do you have in your spine? Some of you have 34, but it's the average is 33. This is, here's the synchronicity of this. Traveling up the spinal cord to ascension. Ascension equals 33. It's tied right to 28. The Lucifer equals 28. Folks, we are all the devils down here in Wonderland. That, that's, what, that's what we are. We're all fallen angels. And we're all experiencing this reality and we're being remotely controlled by something outside of our reality. That's clear now. I mean, there's no mistakes anymore. I, I did a decode on Down in a Hole. If you haven't seen that, please check it out with Alice in Chains, the band. The reason why they sang the song Down in a Hole. Well, Down in a Hole is a 49. It's tied to this element called Indium, like going inward. Indium's 21, and this is the 21st card in the deck of the tarot. It's the world card. It's us going inside the hole. There, here are the four faces of the, of the divine talked about in Ezekiel 1 verses 10, the ox lion, eagle man. And then when you bring in astrology, that's why I love Santos, Mr. Astro Theology, because theology is astrology. That's all it is. There it is. It's the ox lion, eagle man, X marks the spot and we go down into the hole and that's what that's how you synchronize this down on a hole 49 in going inward indium's 21 21st cards the world card going down into the world folks you can't miss this you can't miss it that's exactly how this code is that's how tightly woven this code is folks so let's get into one of the big topics and that is zinc's 30 because you know that zinc is 30. It's the 30th element. But look at this, folks. Easter is a Christian holiday tied to the Jewish holiday of Passover. They're all in, in bed together. There's no separation. And look at the date that they put on the internet. Now, I don't know if this is true. I wasn't there. But why would they choose 30? Go research it. Why would they put 30 there? And did the, 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 peop, the, the Native American people that de, uh, developed these cards in 1988, were they looking at this information? You got to use your common sense and logic. They wouldn't, this, I don't believe it's, I don't, <laughs> anyway, folks, there, there it is, pulling a rabbit out of the hat. It's all about magic. We live in a world of magic. We're all magicians practicing magic every time you speak you're speaking magic spells that's why they say how do you hey how do you spell your name what's the spelling of your name we speak spells i'm speaking spells right now so here's the synchronization of the tarot and the medicine deck rabbit card is the 30 going down the hole that's what it signifies rabbit is the number 12 in numerology and of course what's the 12 card in the tarot it's the freaking hangman i mean can you logically see what's going on here completely different card systems a completely different system with numerology and yet we're able to synchronize all of them and tell you the story of how this reality really works i mean you can't miss it you cannot miss it we're, we're up when the we're in the upside down world as we go down the hole that's what the hat means and the rabbit signifies the resurrection and uh, into duality. I mean, look at the sinks here on this. Demiurge is 30, tied to the new age name of the yod heh vah -Heh, Jehovah, that's 30, tied to the rabbit card. Even the word Eucharist, some of you eat these things or have. I mean, do you, can you see what you're celebrating here, folks? Can you see it? I mean, I got tons of friends that just, I just, you know, out of habit, hey, happy Easter, happy Easter. But what does it really mean? 
It's your celebration of being here in duality. That's what it means. Is that a bad thing? It's completely, there is no good or bad, but it just depends on what you want to put your energy into. I'm just showing you the code. I'm not telling you exactly what you should or shouldn't do. So that's completely up to you. But you can clearly see, folks, I'm not even mixing and matching ciphers. You can see I'm using primarily just the Chaldean to show you the foundation of how this code works. And the, look at these sinks. I mean, undeniable, the sinks on there. You can clearly see everything that's going on. So, you know, the rabbit leads to the word monster. The word monster equals the number 30, a cool little graphic by someone on DeviantArt, but... I mean, the 30 is, and some of you had asked me, hey, sh can you decode um, the movie Monsters, Inc. by Disney? Because it's the monsters, you know, and monster equals the demiurge and, it, and, and it's tied to the rabbit card. Well, I did do that. And here it is. Here are the two main characters in Monsters, Inc. and their names, James P. Sullivan and Mike Wazowski. Of course, James is the big uh, furry guy and the Cyclops is Mike Wazowski and they equal the number 95, which is one half of the I am. Like, you know, this is this is what the code is saying, folks. You got to see it. It's, it's I am that I am. Yeah, but it's everything in this reality. It's everything. So some of you are like, oh, I can't believe that, you know, that, that whatever created this reality is going to become a pedophile. There's no other explanation for it. Because we're in duality. We're in hell, folks. So I, I decided to look at a little bit of the, um, uh, more of the um, geometric representations. And I got into the, the pyramid numbers and, you know, the squares and all that stuff. And, uh, of course, the pyramid is big because... If you look into the Great Pyramid of Giza and all those locations, I'm going to show you a slide on that in a minute, but look at the first four numbers in the uh, pyra pyramidal numbers. The first four, 1, 5, 14, and 30. The, the fourth pyramidal number is 30. Four means the heart chakra. And if you've been following along and realizing how important that heart chakra is, it's green, and that's the word green equals 20, which means duality. That's why the lower chakras are the red, orange, and yellow, the one, two, and three. That's the, the hellish regions. That's the 666, the great beast. But it's the 30. The, the fourth pyramidal number is 30. And if you, can, if you can see that, folks, you have more keys to the kingdom. Here is the pyramids in Egypt, the great pyramid, the three pyramids, which are a representation of the Orion's belt. And look at the degrees. The latitude longitude of the Great Pyramid of Giza is 29 degrees north and 31 degrees east. What sits in the very middle of 29 and 31? It's freaking 30. It's 30, folks. It's, it's right there. You, you can't miss it. We're talking about pyramids right there. It's the fourth pyramidal number. Pyramid. It's right in between that 29 and 31. You, you can't miss it, folks, if you know what you're looking for. So let me just show you really quickly the number 30 and its properties, its footprint here in duality. The, it's called the sine and cosine waves. In the background, there is the sine and cosine waves. This That is the vibrational frequency that we all make up and the number, everything in this reality, It's this is the footprint of that. And we can measure that through trigonometry and advanced mathematics. But when you just really use the basic fundamentals of trigonometry, it's the sine and cosine waves. And there it is. And when you add these two up, you get 66 for the sine wave and 71 for the cosine wave. And when you add them up, you're going to get 137. And it's the 30 freaking third prime number. So you can see the tie-ins to this. If you know all what this one third, it's, it's, it's all about light. 137, when you synchronize the number 30 coming down the rabbit hole, what's coming down the hole? Well, it would have to be light, would it not? Because we then turn into physical matter and duality. We become physical people with our bones in calcium, which I showed. That's how you synchronize this, folks. So here's some more expressions. 30, when you say 30, it's 17. The God of the Old Testament, New Testament, the God of the Holy Bible, which is tied to the Alice in Wonderland story. That's 17, 17th cards of the star card. We're all stars. 
17 is the colors of the rainbow, one through seven. We're talking about light. You go right back here. 30 is light. This is tied to the measurement of light. So you can't miss it, folks. And, you know, the original spelling of the yod heh vah there it is. It's 26 tied to iron, which I believe is f feminine. That's what the F-E is. 55 and iron. This, this deity, by the way, this, this idea... This demiurge, if this is the demiurge that runs it, which is, of course, tied to Yaldabaoth, maybe one in the same, or maybe one's the boss of the other, but the, um, the, the, the G-O-D is 26 in the English when you synchronize that, but th this deity came out in the Iron Age, the Bronze and Iron Age, which is a representation of Yaldabaoth as well. So they're all synchronized together. And, you know, Jesus was from where? He was from Nazareth, Jesus of Nazareth is 30. Same as Santa Claus. Santa Claus is 30. How about that, folks? And well, I decided to look up Nazareth on the map and find out what the latitude, longitude of Nazareth, where Nazareth is located. It's 32 degrees north. What's 32, folks? Resurrection or resurrect. 32 is duality, folks. It means the so below. How about that? It's right there. What's 32 plus 35? 67, folks. Do you think this is man coding this at this level? And that's why they got Santa Claus. From? I mean, look at, look at the sinks. 32 plus 35. Get out your calculators. That's 67. That's this element right here, Holmium. What does Santa say? Ho, ho, ho. Merry Christmas. What's Christmas tied to? The birth of the Christ. It's all, and Nazareth is 30. Santa Claus, you, there's, there are no accidents, folks. All of this is part of the code that we're living out. All of it, which makes all of it real. There are no right or wrongs, no mistakes, no coincidences. It's just a matter of what you end up putting your energy towards. So when you break down zinc, and this, this is where, this is, this is pretty funny. And I didn't see this until I actually compiled this presentation for all of you. But zinc is the description of it anyway. And I'm going to show you the guy who discovered it. I mean, that there's some... But nonetheless, folks, this is what it means. The explanation. Or I'm sorry. Yeah, the image. Of this, this is the image they used. The Royal Society of Chemistry now. That's the image they used to describe zinc. Look at what it says. It was inspired by zinc roofing materials. Roof, like building a roof. Anybody out there is in construction? Have you ever built a roof before? Are you a roofer? Maybe you are. So you'd appreciate this. But even if you're not, you're going to appreciate this. Folks, I mean, there it is staring you in the face. What is a roof? What is, if you look, what is, is, is a roof up or down? If you're standing inside your house, is a roof up or is it down? It's up. Of course, unless you're standing on it. What is ascension? It means going upwards. We all know that. But look at how silly we are here connecting. And you think man's coding this. Some people think man is actually responsible for this stuff. Folks, man, this is clear. Man's not, this is stupid stuff here. But yet we can synchronize it and a roof is up. Ascension is up. Ascension is 33. It's, it's right there. And on top of that, folks, what does Santa come step on before he comes down the chimney? A freaking roof. He gets on top of your roof and he comes down the freaking chimney signifying going from ascension down to duality folks that's what this means that's what this means right here that's why the christ is tied to santa claus that's why december 20 a lot of people don't think oh well you know christ wasn't born on december 25th who cares the story is completely synchronized with jesus and here's an it's right there you can't miss this and this is undeniable right here of where these things came from. People weren't sitting down who came up with the idea of Santa Claus and they knew that Jesus of Nazareth was, of Nazareth was 30. And they're saying, well, we're going to call him Santa Claus because we're using the Chaldean numerology and that's 30. And the latitude longitude is 67. And we're going to, Santa's going to say, ho, ho, ho. Come on, folks, use your common sense. 
Man's not coding this. Roofing is 33, ascension. Roofs are above your head. It's just, it's so simple when you look at it. And it's, it's absolutely hilarious if you ask me that all this stuff is synchronized together and it's just a big joke is what it is. It's a big fat joke. So here's the picture blown up. And when you place it over the Taurus fields, I've used this many times, it goes right over inside that Taurus field and it encapsulates and puts a square or a box inside the, the apple. Puts, it goes right over it. There it is. And you can clearly see the Taurus field and what the shapes of what this makes. Did they do this on purpose? Maybe, but you can clearly see right there, the, the square, right inside the square are two circles and there would be the infinity symbol right inside there. Right there, it's right there, folks. You can't miss it. Here's the guy who supposedly was the discoverer of zinc. Let me go back up and show you. Here it is, discovered by Andreas Margraf. I don't know, was this fudged? I don't know, maybe, but I mean, clearly when you look at this guy right here, I mean, look at this, he was born on March 3rd. What's March 3rd, also known as 33? March 3rd is the 62nd day of the year, 63 in leap years. Look at what it's linked to, folks. Zinc, zinc has an atomic weight or an isotope of 62. I mean, are you freaking kidding me? Are you kidding me? I mean, it leaves 303 days remaining until the end of the year. And this guy is the guy supposedly who discovered zinc. I mean, there's gold right there. I mean, folks, there's so many layers that someone, if someone is trying to mock you and they would have to write all this stuff in Wikipedia, they would, everybody would have to be in on the conspiracy because it could not be just one or a few people doing all this stuff to try to mock you or try to, you know, pull the wool over your eyes by changing dates to have all these things match up like this. Do you realize what kind of work would go? And what would be the point? This is not, this has nothing to do with killing anybody or rituals or trying to take anything away from you folks. This is just common sense stuff. Who discovered what and, I mean, elements and real isotopes and real things measured in a laboratory and real numbers through primes and all this stuff. I mean, folks, it's all connected. And to think that man could ever code this is absolutely ludicrous thinking. So, you know, you, then you, you get into, the, you know, we're talking about the 30 folks. Here's the guy who discovered zinc, 30, tied to Santa Claus and tied to, you know, the roof and all that kind of stuff. And Here's the movie. This popped into my head as I was decoding this. You ever see this movie called Zero Dark Thirty? Zero Dark Thirty. Here's the guy who wrote it. <laughs> this is where it's, this is, folks, again, I mean, what would be the point of trying to mock you or trying to pull the wooly over your eyes? And I, again, I'm going to say that to all of you listening. I'm not pointing that, I'm not pointing that into anybody's direction. Some of you think I'm isolating people out, folks. It's just so many people using those words. So many people in the decoding world using those words. And they just, it's just, it's lame. It's ludicrous thinking that. So it's not directed towards anybody, but folks, think about this with your common sense. Zero dark 30, it's all about the 30s, the zero and the 30. And this guy wrote the movie. And look at what his birthday is. January 23rd, let me, let me show you that, just so we crystal clear. Here's January, and we go down, and here is the 23rd, look at what card it is. It's the four diamonds card. It's the four diamonds card and the four diamonds card is the 30th. It's not just any card, folks. It's the 30th card of all cards. It's the freaking 30th card in the deck. How about that? And it's what is, we're talking about zero dark. What? Zero dark 30 tied to zinc tied to this character right there called the Yodei Vahe. Folks, you can, you can see tied to the rabbit card and the Demiurge. It's all freaking connected. There is no separation. None. Zero separation. So folks, here's another example with, and I've shown this in my decode of Jack in the Box. If you haven't seen that, please check it out. But, you know, Jack in the Box was founded, if you look at the uh, expressions here in the bio, it was founded on February 21st by Robert Peterson. And of course, February 21st is 
not only any card, it's the freaking 30th card in the deck. We're, folks, we're all jack in the box. That's what this is telling us. The, 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 whatever created this reality has one hell of a sense of humor. It, it wants to be funny. It's really funny. It's like a stand-up comedian. And this is no separation on this and why we're seeing this is, I mean, February 21st, and let me be really transparent. Here it is, February 21st. Right there, February 21st is the Four Diamonds card. That's the 30th card in the deck. And the Jack in the Box was founded on the day that's tied to the Four Diamonds card, which is the 30th card in the deck. Are you freaking kidding me? What would be the point of trying to mock you if you're, you know, trying to get all this stuff out there like that? Folks, man's being used. The four diamonds in the tarot is the four of pentacles. It's the freaking 67th card. What's the 67? It's holmium. Ho, ho, ho. Holmium. It's just so funny, folks, when you really syncretize all of these and you can clearly see the code that man is being used, period. Here's the birthday of Robert Peterson. And then his founding native Jack in the Box, and this is this is this is really funny as well. But you know, he was born on March 13th. That's the Ten Diamonds card. It's the 36 card in the deck. He founded Jack in the Box on February 24th, 21st, which is the Four Diamonds card, the 30th card. So there's 66, 36, and 30 is 66. But this, what I wanted to show you, folks, you see, is it's tied to the Tropic of Cancer and the Tropic of Capricorn. Representing duality, the equator sits in the middle. The Tropic of Cancer and the Tropic of Capricorn. If you're not seeing it yet, let me point it out to you. What is, if you're an astrologer, what is the 10th zodiac sign in astrology? It's Capricorn. There's the 10. What is the fourth zodiac sign in astrology? Cancer. There's the four. So this guy right here is... The founder of Jack in the Box, which was on February 21st, which is the 30th card tied to the rabbit card. And his birthday is the 10 diamonds. They're both diamonds now. And he's a complete representation of Cancer and Capricorn, which represent the Northern and Southern hemispheres. Cancer and Capricorn are known as the crab and the goat. And those completely equal to number 74. And if you know what the 74 is, 74 is tied to Yalabath in the 373. How about that, folks? You see, this, is, this has nothing to do with Easter, but it has everything to do with Easter because it's all part of the code. Jack in the Box has nothing to do with Easter, but it has everything to do with Easter because this is a representation of us being stuck in the box. So let's get into the tortoise and the hare. My last topic. My last topic, folks. And this one, I just found this one last night. But, you know, I didn't find it until I realized that zinc is where our starting point is. Going down into the hole. And of course, three is pi and zinc is three. I mean, it's 30, but it's still a representation of the whole representing the 33 and 32, which is 65, but it's the rabbit card. And the rabbit is tied to the story of the, the, the turtle and the hare, the tortoise and the hare. And it's about a race between the two. And of course the rabbit falls asleep and the turtle ends up winning the race. There's a checkered flag at the end usually as well in sports and racing. There's checkered flags representing duality as well. Whoever wins, wins in duality. That's what the whole checkered flag means. But nonetheless, the hare represents the rabbit that we're all chasing of time. And you can clearly see when you synchronize all this, it's the rabbit we chase down into time, into duality. We become calcium on our bones and we end up becoming man. So in essence, in this example, we are and become the turtle, which is a, which is a reptile, <laughs> which is where our reptilian brain comes into play. It's really interesting when you go this deep with this. It's so very simple to see, but it's so very deep and complex, the turtle. 
And when you synchronize the story, the original story, and I could have went way deeper on this, but here it is, the tortoise and the hare. And, you know, the tortoise is 33 and hare is 13. But the total numerology together is a 46. Remember, folks, the word homo sapien, which is what we all are, that equals the number 46. But you see, we become the combination of Jesus and Lucifer down here in duality. Good cop, bad cop. Or perhaps one and the same character. But this is what we become right here. And we become this man chasing time. We chase time. That's what we end up doing with this whole format. And, you know, of course, this is a representation of the dome over our heads, the turtle shell. That, that's, that's, what is, that's what all this means, folks. And there's, this is tied to the moon and, you know, third, the 13's on the back of the turtle. I mean, it's, it's all synchronizing up when you look at it. And you can even do the alchemy of arsenic and aluminum when you add up 74 and 26, and you're going to get the number 101. And the 101, if some of you have been paying attention, that's linked to the hole. The zero is the hole that we go down. And the one on each side are the two anode and cathode, I, I believe. The positive and negative, the battery, and the zero is the representation of the hole we go down in the string of pi, the 101. The, the zero is found at the 853rd decimal digit. 853 is the 88. So many sinks with this, folks. So many freaking sinks. And, uh, you know, really it comes down to the Vesca, excuse me, the Vesca Pisces and what the eggs symbolize, because we're talking about the hare and the rabbit. That's, all this stuff synchronizes, and this is where the Vesica Pisces comes into play. And of course, NFL football, the football fits right inside that dead center of the Vesica Pisces and the Easter egg is going to fit right in between there as well. There it is, the Easter egg inside. And that's what it is. It's the primordial egg that we get stuck inside. We live inside this, this cosmic egg. And then there's the football inside there. And that's where the NFL, that's why I'm saying folks, Easter and sports have no separation. None. They're all connected. There's no separation of all this stuff. It's all currency. All of it is currency. Anytime you mention something, you give it energy. You give it currency. There's no escaping that. None. And when you look at the measurements of the Vesica Pisces, it's one, typically it's 265, but I believe that's off a digit. I, I think it's 264, which represents our DNA, but it's the 153. How many fish did the Christ catch with the apostles in the story of the Bible? 153. It's catching human beings and keeping them stuck in the egg, keeping them stuck in duality, folks. That's what, this, that's what I believe this story means, as beautiful as the Christ energy is. Go watch my video on the Christ battery, but there are the two elements tied to the 153 and 264. And if you can synchronize these and see what these mean, folks, you have way more keys to your kingdom. I could have went so deep with this right there, but folks, I'm going to tell you that leads to something big. It leads to something very, very big. Something that would be another topic to discuss. But there are the synchronizing of the egg and the NFL football, the Vesica Pisces. This is all about the resurrection. This is all about Easter, the tomb. This is all about keeping you in duality, folks. And it really leads down to past, present, and future. And again, folks, I don't even know if there is a way out of this. Some of you get bummed out by that. I don't know why you would make the best of it. Make the truth your own and enjoy the ride. Discover your code. Some of you don't know why you're here. You have a very loose and watered down version of why you're here. And that doesn't give the greatest experience because you can't own space that you're not aware of. But look at this, folks. This is what the Christ said. I am the root. This is Revelation 22, 16, I believe. I am the root and the offspring of who? David. I am the root and the offspring of David and the bright morning star. David is a 40, in the original spelling, it's a 41 tied to the whale card. That's the Akashic records. But look at what this is. David is 16. The word hell equals 16. 
What is this telling us? Jesus is an offspring of the past. Obviously. But it's connected into this right here, past, present, and future. If you take 16 plus 32 plus 31, you're going to get 79. That's gold. But notice what they all equal. Past, present, and future. I mean, I'm sorry, the, the, what they all come up with, the capstone. This is the first letter of each word. It's the 888. Past, present, and future is the 888. And, you know, looking at the present, it's 32. It's duality. 32 means physical matter. 32 is duality tied to sulfur. And we're talking about past, present, and future. It's 888. There it is, folks. Let me show you and break this down. Let me narrate this for you. Just stick with me. Past, present, and future is 888. When you look at the capstones in numerology, the numerology, the first letter of each word is the most important. 888. This right here at the top, is the sine and cosine waves, let me show you that, of the number 888. Here it is. Here is the sine and cosine waves, the footprint of the number 888, right there, which is found from the capstone of these words, past, present, and future. Look at what it equals, folks. It's the freaking golden ratio. Golden ratio is 1.61. If you take past 16 and you add present 32 and add future 31, get out your calculators, what are you going to get? 70 freaking nine. What is 79? It's gold, folks. This is the golden ratio. 888. The number 888 through the sine and cosine waves, the footprint with these waves going behind is freaking the golden ratio and past, present, and future is gold. What do you think the odds would be of that, folks? We're being mined for our, this. What this is telling you right here, clearly, you can see. And I keep saying this, I'll keep saying it. It's the way this works, like it or not. And the, again, these are my opinions and truths, but you know, I'm showing you. I'm not just telling you with my opinion. A lot of people love to put their opinions out there and they give you this story and they have nothing to support it with. It's just what their opinion is like, oh, this is the way it works. And it, oh, that sounds pretty good, but they have nothing to back it up. That's weak in my eyes. I need something to back it up. Don't you? Do you just take people's words for it on when they express their opinions? Past, present, and future is 79. It's gold currency, folks. We're being mined for our gold currency in the past, present, and future. That's what this is telling us. Make no mistake about it. And we're living in the present moment, which is 32, which is duality. It's sulfur. 32 degrees is when water turns to ice. 32 degrees is when man turns into physical matter, into the present moment. You, you can see this. And the past would be hell. Hell is 16. And Jesus said he's the offspring of David. That's sick of the past. But they're all joined together. And this is what the whole thing about Easter and Christmas and Santa Claus and the Easter bunny and the Easter egg. That's what they all represent. So when you're out there playing with your little Easter eggs with your little with your kids and going on Easter hunts, what you're doing is you're giving energy to keeping you stuck inside the loop of time. That's what I'm showing here. And it's gold currency, folks. And there may not be a way out of this. I don't know. Because this is obviously going from left to right and showing the, the, the infinity symbol right here. But then you have the one that goes vertically. That's the one I'm interested in. Because <coughs> that one may get you out of here. I don't know, though. So folks, what is it you saw during this presentation? I, a lot of information. I went off on a lot of different directions. If you made it till this very end, congratulations. Most of you, or I shouldn't even say that because it won't even matter. The majority of people did not make it all the way to the end of this and that's okay. Some people probably find, might find it boring. It wasn't relevant. 
But the attention span going through the analytics is not that great. But those of you that have made it all the way to the end, congratulations. I'd love to hear what you saw during this presentation. What did you see? What did you see during this presentation? So folks, that's all I got for today. My name is Logan. This is Decode Your Reality. And I thank each and every single one of you for your support, your contributions, your Patreons, your donations, all of that and more. I appreciate each and every one of you. Until next time, folks, we will see you later.